Yo, what up? This is B-Boy Dizzy from the Supernaturals crew. I'm going to be talking about uh, how to build a better B-Boy future. Not just for me, but for everybody, alright? So, please bear with me as we go through this, you know, in-depth discussion, okay? So, first we've got to talk about the problems in our community. First problem is, there's no unity in our community. Okay, second thing is, there is nothing official. It's all opinion, all perspective, but nothing made concrete official. The third thing is, there is no power to the b-boys. All the power is in the hands of like the organizers or people with the money. That leads us to number four. There is no protection for the culture. Okay, we have no way to protect ourselves. The fifth thing is, the general audience doesn't understand what we do, why we do it, or anything like that. Okay, They want to know, but they can't. The sixth thing is, there's no money in b-boy. And yes, there's some people who make money off judging gigs and whatever, but that's little money, okay? That leads us to number seven. There is no financial future, right? How much jams do we got to win and how many battles do we got to win or how many events do we got to judge in order for us to put our kids to college? It's not going to happen, okay? Now, here are some our dreams, okay? Dreams that we all share together. Number one, we would like fair, professional, and unbiased battles one day. We'd also like the freedom to be, but whether that be financial freedom to b-boy or our parents saying hey stop doing that that's leading nowhere right we want to have that which leads us to wanting a dream of worldwide respect and understanding for b-boy okay we also want to have protection and preservation of our culture right we want unity within our culture okay and hopefully financial stability which means not having to worry about money when kids get older you're going to worry about money that's just part of life, all right? Maybe you're living with mommy and, and daddy, but in the future, you know, when there's no more mommy and daddy to pay the bills, you know what I'm talking about, okay? And lastly, we want a self-sustaining industry. A self-sustaining industry means an industry that doesn't need outside sponsors and begging, going, hey, can you please sponsor my event or this or that? It means, you know, everything within the community, okay? So, what is needed? First of all, we need to find a judging system, okay? And secondly, we need an association, okay? These two things are very important and vital to the growth of our culture. The judging system needs to be able to preserve the essence of the dance. It needs to allow freedom, not put b-boying into a box. It has to represent all the views of the dance, which means they have to be equal, have some type of equality, okay? It's gotta be based on facts and already existing standards of the dance, like music, originality, even difficulty, like skills, technique, right? And these have to be agreed upon, right? Not just one person, but people have to agree upon it, okay? Judging system has to also be transparent, right? We need to see what's going on, and this judging system needs to be able to educate the audience, okay? The association now, it's got to represent all the views of the dance, okay? All voices need to be heard, and the most respected pioneers and legends of each view, they got to be on board, okay? The association needs to approve of the system because a system without the approval of an association is worthless, right? It's just an opinion. At the same time, an association without a judging system doesn't make much sense either, right? It's just a bunch of people coming together for whatever reason, right? Okay, so the association needs to have official and agreed standards. It needs to create that and it needs to protect the culture as well as a speak on behalf of the community especially to big organizations and the association needs to be professional okay so if we have the judging system and we have an association these problems these things are dealt with okay the only last two things is that there's no money still no money in b-boying and there still is no financial features so what we have to do with the association and the system is one it's got to market b-boying and two it's got to protect b-boying it's got to market b-boying to the media. At the same time, it's got to protect b-boying from the media. Okay, It's got to market b-boying to the sponsors, but it's got to protect b-boying from the corporations. It's got to market b-boying to the general audience who know nothing about breaking, but it's got to protect b-boying from ourselves, from the people who want to own or be the top honcho of b-boying. Okay? We need an association for that. So the association requirements are, one, it's got to half be about the community, Another half, it's got to be about business. It's got to be 50-50. It can't be, you know, 30-70. It can't be even 49-51. It's got to be 50-50, okay? The community side of it, 
that it needs we need a committee okay a committee that speaks on behalf okay that's all the views and is united okay it's got to be not for profit because no not one person should own b-boy and it's got to own the judging system the association needs to own it not one person not a single person not me not nobody okay it's also got to protect the culture and through the association it's going to look out for the community's best interests like associations are supposed to do right it's got to be serving the community not dictating to the community on the other side of it it's got to be business okay it's got to be about business too right it's got to be professional that means it needs to have staff professional staff that are educated and experienced in business that knows how the corporate system works okay we got to have worldwide reps all over the world because each country is different but through this association we're gonna have one mind okay and the association's got to make the judging system whatever it is accessible everywhere to everyone all over the world okay so let's talk about the self-sustaining industry okay the industry leaders or the ones that control the way the industry grows any industry is number one the media is on top of everything okay also is the sponsors and investors the people with money and of course as a result of that we have the entertainment industry that dictates what is cool and what not is not we are at the bottom okay we are the grassroots b-boy community right the entertainment industry consists of a lot of things like the commercials the movies the shows and even the nightclubs okay what do the grassroots b-boy community have we got b-boy events now the b-boy events are directly uh get their get benefited from the grassroots community right because we're the ones pumping the money into the b-boy events right it's a one-way street because the only ones that make money are the organizers hopefully they do a good job and maybe the one crew that wins and maybe a couple of judges okay one-way street so what we need in the middle of everything is an association and system okay once we have that th what we're gonna have is the grassroots b-boy community putting together the association and system and in return the association system is doing everything to serve the grassroots b-boy community serving in a good way okay they'll do that the association by making sure these b-boy events are done right that best benefit the community this is going to serve the community and benefit them and in return as these b-boy events grow they are giving back to the association and the system right so this is the first self-sustaining industry that we got, or self-sustaining self community, okay? It's rather small, but this is how everything starts growing. What is next is the association can do something that these organizers and grassroots community can't do, and that is put together the pro leagues, a new battle industry, okay? Professional battles, okay? This is going to make or bring in a new fan-based audience, general audience, right? The way that this is done is by the association and the league going to the media, promoting b-boying. The media is showing b-boying, right? That's going to further increase the general audience. And what's that going to do? It's going to attract the sponsors and investors. The sponsors and investors are now putting money in back into the pro league. The pro league is putting money back into the association. And the sponsors and investors are putting money now into the grassroots b-boy community, okay? Now... Because these three are growing and growing and growing, this opens up the ability for a new industry to start. That is the b-boy product industry, where companies can start making uh, a market or creating a market for b-boy products, such as b-boy music, right? Got to make music for b-boys. We're going to have to have things for health for b-boys, like, you know, imagine a pill that you eat it and your knee meniscus gets better and better no one else would take that but b-boys would right as this health company gets bigger they put money back into b-boying because b-boys are their customers right so another thing is uh b-boy fashion and wear right how many of us like mock necks why because it looks good right and it spins and it's not hot right these are the kind of things and kind of clothes that we want for b-boys right if it's made for b-boys by b-boys b-boys will buy it especially if it's fresh and it looks good right Next thing we're going to have is B-Boy merchandise, which will best uh, appeal to the fans, right, because of the pro leagues, okay? So, what we have next is the B-Boy product industry putting money back into the league, back into the association, and back into the grassroots community. As a result of this, the grassroots B-Boy community is going to open up B-Boy schools, 
that are going to be approved by the association, so putting money back into the association, and what's going to happen, the government is going to open up community centers for b-boys to start training at, okay? This is how a self-sustained industry works without having to rely on the entertainment industry and the commercials and movies and shows. But anyways, what's going to happen is the entertainment industry is going to want to get involved with the association and b-boying, right? So coming to the association, we now get to protect it. And then what's going to happen? Uh, the entertainment industry that has commercials, movies, shows, and nightclubs is going to provide more opportunities for the b-boy community to have more commercials, to have more movies, more shows, and finally be allowed back into the nightclubs of b-boying is going to be welcomed back into the nightclubs. That's going to be great. Okay, So because of the entertainment industry now, the general audience and fans are going to grow even more bigger. Right? They're going to get into b-boying, they're going to understand b-boying, they're going to love it, and what, do, what are they going to do? They're going to see the fashion wear, the health products, the b-boy music, and these industries grow, they're going, and these companies grow, they're going to put money back into what the b-boy events. So this is how a self-sustaining industry works. Right? It keeps growing because money coming from the outside comes in, and the money on the inside keeps circulating throughout b-boying. Right? Like for example, the companies that we buy from, like Puma, Nike, Adidas, right? They're not b-boy companies, right? Of course, we love their clothes, we love their shoes and stuff, but as we're, they're getting money from the b-boy community, they're not putting money back into further the community, you know what I mean? But why? Because they're not b-boy communities. You can't expect them to, right? So, let's make a comparison from skaters, right? Skater similarities are, they're just like us. They have a huge underground culture all around the world, okay? Underground people, right? They also have different views about what's proper skating, as well as, they are international, just like us. But the big difference between skating and b-boying is $5.7 billion per year. That's how much skating industry makes, okay? They also have an association, and many associations as a matter of fact, right, to look out for the interest of, the best interest of the skateboarding community. They also have pro leagues for people who want to go professional, even though the underground culture is way bigger than the professional culture, you know what I mean? Uh, they also have many skateboard companies you know what I mean? That are pumping money back into the skateboard industry. Why? Because healthy skateboarding industry means healthy skateboarding companies, right? And businesses, okay? So they also have endorsements and sponsors. They have all these things which b-boying can one day have if we just pull ourselves together, okay? So why not b-boying? Why couldn't b-boying do this? A lot of people are saying b-boying can't do that. You know, it's impossible. And you were right. You were right if you said that at one point because until now, it could have never happened. Why? Because... Let's look at the history. The first generation of b-boys in the 70s, what were they? They were gang from gangs, and they were from a poverty area. They couldn't make a self-sustained industry. They couldn't know what to do, you know? And as things grew into the 80s and the media explosion came, what happened? The media had control. You know, they gave these b-boys and these people from the ghetto an opportunity to go on TV and whatever. You know, to them, that was a good thing. They didn't know that it was going to die out. They had no clue. There was no protection for the future because they, they just didn't know what to do and how to protect themselves, Right? So, so when after it died out, the third generation comes out. And in the third generation, b-boying was dead, okay? Like, the media killed it. People thought it was dumb. So wh what this generation was was a revival, the, the few people that revived it. And it was tough because if certain people had to revive it, there was so much hate towards b-boying because they were saying it's played out that the only people did it are the ones that other people couldn't tell, hey, stop doing that. Why? Because these people, were they were the bad boys, you know what I mean? They were the rebels that people couldn't tell, hey, stop b-boying or whatever. These guys... These bad boys didn't care. They'll do whatever they wanted to, okay? So, comes around year 2000, okay? Fourth generation, 2000. This started different multiple things in b-boying, right? First, it started the internet era, right? Where the international events are popping up all over the world. People got to see who's from where, see different styles, and hopefully get flown out and whatever. This is where the fame came in, okay? They're all about the fame, right? Want to become famous. Where the third generation of b-boys... There was no fame. It was just about smoking b-boys. But now, people dancing for the fame. Okay, whatever. Right? You also have the competition era that started in, in the 2000s. That meant there were college jams, all types of jams popping up all over the place. And what did this do? This attracted a new generation of b-boys that weren't the bad boys, but they were the rich kids, the nerds, the students. I'm not saying that there weren't no bad boys back in those days, but, you know, it brought in a type of b-people that weren't like the 70s, 80s, or 90s. Well, maybe the 80s, but maybe not the 70s and 90s, okay? Right? This also brought in the judges era because they needed to have, for once, for finally, 
judges and b-boys found a way that they could make money right they can make money from b-boying funny you know 200 bucks here 500 bucks there 300 and they could fly around the world all this kind of stuff you know even though the money was small it came through you know it happened and this brought forth the perspective war why people had to fight over their perspective because it was all about your opinion if no one agreed with your opinion you couldn't get jobs you couldn't get gigs you couldn't fly around the world so this is where everyone's just started going off on who's right and who's wrong and whatever because you know what that's what happens and that's what that's what b-boying was about right so why now why can things change if that's what b-boying was about and if that's what b-boying still is about why now in 2010 to the present time how can it change why because number one there's way more support than there ever was i'm not talking about just companies i'm talking about the government the government putting money because they see that b-boying is a good thing it's youth culture you know what i mean it's like the cult it's a uniting culture another thing too is we're starting to define our culture right we're starting to make things more official and we're trying to create new standards as a dance okay but not just that more important than these the reason why things can change now is because there's a new generation all those rich kids all those students and nerds you know in the 2000s they have now finally graduated from school and they are the smart educated b-boys now they they're ones that can take b-boying to a brand new level all over the world in every single country okay they have more professional experience now and they know have the business know-hows they know how to take b-boying in that direction you know what i mean you know of course there's going to be some dope i mean some of them are actually professional b-boys and stuff too but but we also have those professional b-boys okay so where do we begin number one we have to find a judging system that can do all of this preserve the essence allow freedom blah 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 but we also need to have at the same time an association like i said that has pioneers ogs legends and superstars in every view right representing all different views of b-boying and we need to unite them together okay we've got to make official standards for b-boying and it has to be agreed upon okay so there is going to be you know a judging system launch of the judging system that I've been working on, that we've been working on since 1999, which is a collection of all the OGs and pioneers that have helped along the way. So please look out for R16 2011 in Korea on July 2nd and 3rd. If you if you really want to follow and find out what's going on, we are posting up everything, all information about the system and our plans step by step on the Facebook page. Okay, so it's really important. Hit up the www.facebook.com backslash r 16 korea to know everything all right so thanks for watching this presentation hope you kept an open mind peace out god bless dizzy out